All right, guys, welcome back. Um, no, Shana is not here to start this video. Um, so I put up a post the other night that uh, we had a little surprise, and so I figured I would attempt to move the surprise so I could show you um, as I try to figure out where I'm going to put it, how I'm going to put it there, um, some things like that. So um, I'm sure there's some of you like us that uh, when it comes to feeding your goats, no, this isn't our feed video, but when it comes to feeding your goats, you're, you're makeshifting something. Um, you're either using PVC hung on the fence, which works pretty good. Um, there's a multitude of companies out there, whether it be like our uh, poly plastic hanging feeders um, for the fence, you get it any of your farm stores or online, um, or sorry if you're catching some wind, um, or if you're getting a, um, a North, oh shoot, a North Star Board Goats makes a uh, fence line feeder. Um, Rivera, I think is how you say it, maybe out of Texas makes one. Um, there's a handful of these fence line feeders, but a lot of them have a slant to dump grain from the outside because if you have boar goats or goats i'm sure most of them are like this um you're gonna get run over 12 times a day if you felt them fed them 12 times a day because they're always hungry for grain and our thing was we didn't want in experiencing the hanging feeders we didn't want a fence line feeder that had um just like a funnely slant to it that dumps into a pan on the inside of the fence because if you have an eight or 10 footer, my goats, you're gonna have one, maybe two goats for that whole thing. So I'm gonna have to have like 500 feet for 10 goats. Um, because even these small little three foot ones, um, you're lucky if you can get two goats to eat out of them, especially when you have some dominant does. And so I got to doing some looking online. Lakeland out of um, Canada had a couple different styles, um, some things like that. And we were looking at doing something more like a cattle feeding scenario um, we wanted them to get their heads in a feeder and eat on the outside of the fence uh, that way hopefully we can get them in the feeder and just stay concentrated on eating and maybe get more of them into a tighter spot so they can't just run along the side of the feeder and nail each other in the side and push each other down the line so I got to doing some looking and the ones uh, I want to say the Lakeland ones are dark green from Canada you had to buy two of them, so you had to buy 20 foot. Um, I don't remember offhand what the price of those was, but they were pretty pricey, um, even before steel really started to come up here, um, late 2020 into 2021. So I got to looking at some local companies, and uh, one of the ones I knew that had some of these bunk feeders for cattle, um, the one that came to mind, I'm from South Central Nebraska in Hastings originally, but over in Minden, Nebraska is Patriot Equipment, um, I used to know them as Minden Machine, but they make uh, creep feeders, they make portable uh, feed bin trailers, like uh, a lot of the ones you're familiar with seeing, a little bit of everything. They make saddle tanks for uh, tractors and all kinds of stuff. But I like the simplistic design of their cattle feeder, but it was a 20 footer. And I don't always need 20 feet in, for every pin. Sometimes I only need eight or 10 feet. And so I got to, I sent him an email uh, with something I drew up and I got to talking with Landon down there, one of the guys that does the drawing. I think there's a couple of them. And I kind of said, well, here's what I'm looking for. Um, I measured some of my hay feeders. This is kind of some dimensions I'm thinking, um, you know, could you draw it up? Um, basically what you do is you pay them for their time to draw, you know, like an hourly charge. So I was looking at say, I don't know, a hundred bucks to have them draw this up and see if it was going to be feasible. And we thought, well, it's a hundred bucks we really don't want to spend, but we won't know what's feasible until it's drawn up because we don't know what the cost will be until the engineering's done. So that gets dumped into the cost of the, uh, the piece of equipment you have them do if you um, pay that fee. So um, I gave Landon the go ahead. He gave me a first drawing. I said, you know, I'd really like to see um, some more, at least an extra head in the feeder. Um, because being 10 foot, we're dealing with versus 20 foot, we're dealing with half sheets of things. 
um, for what they order for their cattle size. So basically we're halving their cattle feeder. Um, trying to make it economical for cuts so there's no waste of material or if you had two of these feeders made, um, you just have one chunk of material and you could split it. And, and as I show you and as I talked to him on Thursday after we were out at the uh, ABGA Nationals watching for a couple hours, um, we'll probably reduce a couple dimensions like at the pan by about a half inch and then that way they can t get two full feeders out of a sheet. But this feeder, I almost, I'm gonna show you, I basically can only drag it across the yard. So compared to the real white ones, this thing is a brute. And it is front heavy because of the size of materials that were used compared to some. So I'm still trying to figure out in the way we currently have it designed in its prototype, one off stage, um, how I want to secure it, uh, what options we want to design into it for securing it if somebody else would want one, um, some things like that. So, but the way this feeder is built compared to the way I've looked at some of them, it's easily twice as heavy. You would swear this is somebody just micro sized the cattle feeder because that's exactly the materials they used um, since they buy them in bulk. Um, it was actually cheaper to go with the bigger heavier materials in this prototype than it was to buy reduced size materials because we don't necessarily always need everything that heavy. Um, so, you know, there's, there's some pretty good one, one and a half, you know, two inch size stuff that was talked about. Um, you know, like the square tubing on top, I'd have to measure it, but I'm going to guess, I don't know if it's two inch, but it's at least inch and a half. Um, there's some weight to it. Like I said, me and Shana can't pick it up. Um, so I know as far as that goes, it's going to last us quite a while. Um, it's got a couple drain holes built into it when I was designing the pan. I kind of wanted the option to say if we had a hay grinder in the area and he was at a neighbor's grinding some hay, it, or if we have a neighbor that had a processor that could come over and uh, just make grind me up a bale of hay or alfalfa. If I wanted to be able to feed that, I wanted just enough pan space that I could dump some of that in, say some ground alfalfa but yet their hay feeders could still have prairie hay or grass or something in it. So that's kind of what we designed. Um, so let me get you turned around and show you, I don't want to say the finished product, but essentially the first iteration of, I'm going to call it my Lucky M prototype bunk feeder. Okay guys, well, I'm not going to stand in front of it because the wind's blowing a little too much, but uh, so here it is. We wanted to kind of maximize our space without letting a, a goat get stuck because we know any of that could happen. So first off, I knew I wanted to make it 48 inches. So um, basically what we have is from this rail to the feet is 48 inches. And I'd have to look at my drawings to uh, confirm some of these dimensions because I want to say we're maybe three foot to here with an extra foot just to keep them from going over. And actually looking at it now, I don't think we'll ever have an issue. All you would have is a head come through here, but maybe in this spot here, we put another bar, something like that, just to close it up. But like I said, uh, we don't know how it's gonna work yet until I get it in the fence. So I wanted something at least 48 inches tall across the top. That way it would kind of match your, uh, your cattle panel heights of 50 inches. Next, what we wanted to do is try to maximize the space um, how many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We had seven. Originally the drawing had six and I said, you know, for the money I'm spending, I really don't want to spend that kind of money with only six spots. I think if you really tweaked it, you might be able to get eight spots in it, but you know, you'd have to watch cause there's square tubing here. You'd have to get this shoved all the way over, block it off. And then hopefully you have enough room on that side. So that's a possibility um, if I measure it. Um, I've got to see how this spacing works right here. Um, what I'll do is in the descriptions, um, I will try to write some of my dimensions down um, just so you kind of have an idea. This is all by guess right now as far as our on center um, and gap dimensions for these bars because what we figured is if a majority of my goats can get their head through one of these, um, if we make it a hair wider and give them room to turn, um, then maybe they can get their head in here. But what I also wanted to account for is I wanted their heads in it without being able to freely move straight in and out. Because we talked about doing vertical bars and he said, well, you know, then they could get in and out too easy. So what we did is on their, I want to say on their creep feeders, I said, well, what about an adjustable height bar? And we had no idea how to, 
where to start by setting this. So we came up with a couple arbitrary measurements and then they used a piece of pipe with a really big clip welded to it. And then down here, oops, down here, there's actually a notch in these on both sides. So you could flip them around. But when you slide it in, that pin actually clips that bar in place. So we can move that a few inches um, if need be to try to keep their heads in there. Um, the big goats, I'm not worried about them getting through it, but you know, that's just an adjustment we thought maybe on this prototype, we would design in there, it didn't cost much, um, just to see how it would work. Um, another big concern of ours was if I don't wanna put panel on the bottom of this, which would look tacky, let's just use some sheet metal, close that down so we don't have heads getting up underneath that, because that was another concern. Um, so that's kind of where we're at now. Like I said, I'll get you dimension heights from here to here. Um, it's pretty similar to our tartar hay feeders because I wanted them to be able to get their heads down in that bunk. And now if I can get it to focus with this sunlight. So this is a standard foot um, for them on the side. And then you can just kind of see where the feed bunk is welded in there. Um, and so it's not real, real deep, but it's one of those things that should they get their head in, it should be plenty deep for them to eat out of. Um, there are, I know you won't be able to see it, there's a hole here, a hole in the center, and then there's another hole down here on the end. And he said, let's try that and see how that works um, for the time being, to see how it drains. And he said what they, they do on a lot of their cattle ones is they actually extend that hole cut out to the outside. So that way if there's anything big in there and it rains, it'll actually push some of that out. Cause if we were to feed hay in this with those small holes, unless we physically stick our hand in there, clean that out, um, we'll obviously have those plugged up just like with a lot of things. I actually have half inch holes drilled in these just for water. So when I feed in the morning after a rain, they've drained themselves, but that's just grain. So anyway, this is kind of what we're looking at for now. Um, there was uh, a couple little quirks we talked about in manufacturing um, that uh, was just some measurement differences by a half inch or so. Um, so there's a couple things that you visually will not see on this video. You won't be able to tell what is not to design. And honestly, I can't tell and it doesn't matter to me. So um, anyway, they knocked this out pretty quick. It took, I mean, it took a good they'd said eight to 10 weeks to be able to get, get in line for this just due to um, production capabilities and how many orders they had around planting season. Um, that's their, I mean, if you, if you've got stuff that's planting equipment, that's priority. I just wanted this. I didn't need this. Um, so anyway, like I said, um, what I'm going to do here is try to figure out where I'm going to place it. Um, there are feet down here and there's not holes in them but should this be on concrete or if you're to pour concrete um we could put a hole in that and then you could lag it down or something like that because it is by far top heavy um so basically as long as they come in here and put a post and support it um we should be okay i don't know if i'm going to put a post on the side or right in front of it and remove that bar um i'm not really sure yet um since we don't have mounting solution also, I thought if I put a bar or a post to the side, could I drill a hole through something and lag it to it? Or, um, you know, just a couple big U-bolts to hold it. Um, I don't know, we'll have to see. If, if there's a, enough interest in something like this, um, like I said, it's way heavier than the other stuff I've seen. I haven't physically been around all of them, but it's also not a two to $300 feeder um you know some of the ones i know now are going to cost you say three three and a half at this current stage prototype um you know it was a one-off deal so we were just trying to make dimensions work with steel we had the drawing fees and stuff like that which are now already in the in the system you know you're looking at about double this was uh this was a little north of 700 bucks to have this done but if you guys could actually be here and see this the scale of this thing um, and the weight and the quality of steel compared to some of the other ones that are lighter, easier to move. Um, 
it's definitely twice the price because you got twice the material in it. Um, that being said, I can't say that I would be opposed to some of those other ones in a couple other pins just based on, you know, who's in them and how we feed on those pins. But for now, um, I'm going to put, put this in the fence and uh, I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. Okay, guys. Well, I made a run to Menards. They were out of the big two and three eighths, I think. Um, corner post for a chain link fence. That's what I was going to do is just get some six footers, drive them in about three foot. They were out of those, so I just got the regular line post, drove them in oh, just a hair short of three foot. Um, I didn't concrete them in or anything. I just drove them right into the right into the dirt. Um, like I said, I just want to keep that from tipping this way, but if they're eating, they'll push that way. So we'll see what happens. Um, you know, maybe maybe a guy really needs to concrete these in or something, but like I said, we're just trial and error in this um, to see how it works. Um, what I did is I just got a couple U-bolts. Um, there's the size on the U-bolts to go around. And then I utilized one of these holes for this bar that goes through here. I utilized that just to hold that. I still gotta tighten those down. I just, they're just finger tight. But that is essentially what we're looking at. I still have to just wire this panel back up. I'm guessing this is actually more like eight foot. Um, like I said, I've got to measure it yet, but it's about, it's about half a cattle panel. So that'd be eight foot because there was a T post right there where I needed it to be. And there's, there's your other one. So like I said, I'm just kind of patching it in there for now. And uh, we'll see how it works come feeding time tonight. But this is essentially, essentially what we're after, guys. I can get here on the inside of the yard. It'll be an easy walkthrough. Grain them, and then what I'll probably do, I'll probably leave the hanging feeders here nearby. I'll probably put another one on the other half of this panel. Um, usually we feed a little bit in the pan just to spread them out, but there's only like seven goats in here. So bread will probably end up eating here because I don't think his horn set will fit. Um, but we shall see here within an hour or two how feeding goes with the new feeder. Here's the start of the show. Okay, guys. Well, I've got it kind of put in there. Um, like I said, well, moment of truth. Like I said, it's a prototype. We just uh, we just guessed on the sizing of this thing. So. Watch out, Macy. Okay, back up, back up. Honey's out. Watch out, Mace. I don't think they know what's big. Well, I would... Okay, here we go. Let's see what happens. Here, watch out, B. Guys, make it love him. Watch out, B. You gotta be able to get in there. Well, either this is gonna work. Or Brett's going to ruin it. Or Brett's going to ruin it. Or he's going to make lots of babies at the feeder. Here, dump some in the side feeder for him. Because he won't be able to fit. Well, guys, here we go. We've got two of them in the feeder. The biggest problem is going to be Brett. He's going to try to rule the roost here. Well, like I said, if I would readjust where it's set, um, that's where that headspace thing was. But the thing is, you've got to account for the fact that some of these girls' horns are narrower set than others. Well, it is the first time using it. And yeah, so realistically, you could probably narrow it. But guys, this is where those two bars there to have that horizontal bar that would keep them from sliding in and out faster than what they are um you know lizzie's got a pretty pretty wide horn set and she can get in and out um i think ideally you might be able to if we narrowed this a hair you might be able to get one extra 
one extra spot if you narrowed both of these end pieces in a little bit and that one out you might be able to get an eighth spot in but uh i'm not really sure Okay, well, after me and Shana discussing this a little bit, guys, I think where we have the bar set, I'll have to have Landon look at the dimensions. But most of these goats are getting out in, in and out pretty easy. Um, Lizzie can get in and out pretty easy. Um, Tori can get it out, in and out pretty easy. They've got a little bit bigger horn sets. Um, and as you can see, they're coming in and out pretty darn easy. And so we could probably narrow that up a hair. And there may be a chance over the course of all of these slots and those two end pieces maybe we could get an eighth spot in there um but i don't know like i said i've utilized my horizontal bar to anchor this down so i don't know if that would be a benefit to have that horizontal in there to keep them slowed down or if their horns would get hooked i think we'd probably be better off narrowing it an inch or so in the future and going from there but so far nobody's having a problem yeah nobody's having a problem height wise reaching in and eating from the bottom i tried to set this height um, at their shoulder exactly the same height as um, the tartar or small animal hay feeder that way i knew they'd have enough reach with their neck to get in there so um so far i mean i think you could probably over time tweak it but so far it's working good it's working how we want now obviously the hornless goat is cheating the system here but being the first time feeding um it's working but like i said the goal is to get them in here and eating and get them to stay not bouncing in and out and um not getting them to run in and cause them to move get them in here like this get them all eating they can fight in here if they want but the big thing we worry about is when we're feeding like this or say in our big eight foot hay feeder is one of these goats running down and hitting one in the side and worrying about an abortion. So that's one thing we just don't want to happen. What do you think, big man? <laughs> 